I'm George Ingram, and I focus on development and reform in U.S. foreign assistance. I think there's a myth that foreign aid isn't popular. The word, the two words foreign aid are not popular. But if you look at polling over the last 25 years, up to 75% of the American people support what we do with the assistance. They support providing education opportunities for children in poor countries, providing vaccinations and health care to those children and their mothers and fathers. In the 1990s, it's true that foreign aid bills had a hard time passing the Congress. They passed, but there were close votes. That changed with President Bush and Obama. In fact, the last Congress passed eight bills supporting foreign aid, and as the new budget from President Trump has unfolded, you've seen over 60 members of Congress speak out against the proposed 30% cut. I think the impression that other countries aren't doing as much as the U.S. is doing comes from the myth, the misperception, that consistently public opinion polls show that the American people think that 25% of the federal budget goes to foreign aid. Reality is, it's 1%. Foreign aid is an investment in helping to educate and improve the health of children and others in developing countries. It's an investment in helping to farmers improve the quality and quantity of their crops. It's an investment in helping governments develop, improve their policies and procedures so that they can be more effective in promoting a market economy. It's an investment in the security of other countries, which in fact is also an investment in American security. In addition, I would say that investing and providing foreign assistance to victims of earthquakes and conflicts, in fact, is an investment in the values of America, what we stand for as a country. So foreign aid is really an investment in helping other countries become more stable, more economically prosperous, and therefore is an investment in the future of America. Now, if you have a hard time accepting foreign aid as an investment, maybe you can think of it as an insurance. Insurance that is cheaper than at some later point having to send and put in danger American troops. And at the same time, it opens and builds markets for American trade and investment. Now, looking at this from the security side, during the first half of our history, the United States was well protected, uh, with the exception of the British burning Washington in 1812, by two wide oceans and two benign borders. Modern technology, rapid transportation, has rendered those defenses permeable. We can no longer depend on them. We are part of a global world today. Our security is linked to the security of other countries around the world. Oh, 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 oh,